Hi everyone, this is a presentation I have done in IGCON 2025, Fistula Nano choosing the right procedure. In fact, the presentation made for 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes, but because of time short, we rushed it. Many people ask the concept were good, but not able to pick up because it was going fast. So I thought we'll uh, record it and make it available for everyone. Surgical option for any Fistula Nano Fistulotomy, Fistulectomy, Setong, Shara Sutra, Advancement Flap, Lay, Piltec, Waft, Perfect, Tropis, Filet, Laser, uh, Plug, Glue, Stem Cell Therapy. It's kind of a blind man coming and touching the part and feeling that that part is only the, like that only the elephant is. When each expert sees only a part, whole truth get distorted. That's what has been published already. It's happening in the lift also. Every expert feel that the one procedure is the perfect which is applicable and that is what the treatment of choice for the fistula. That's what making trouble in fistula practice for everyone. Every surgeon get confused because of the uh, different different procedures. In fact, I have been in the fistula treatment for last 15 years actually getting involved because in 2009 to 12, I have done the thesis on the fistula and I never understood till 2020 how to approach the fistula. I used to get confused. I used to get very much frustrated and in fact, I used to hate the fistula. But luckily, thanks to my mentor, I went and learned from them. From 2020 onward, the journey is different. Dr. Arun Rajanaskar, Dr. Parvesh Sheikh, sir, under whom I learned. In fact, my talk somewhat bi might be biased because of whatever thought I am putting, it is learned from my mentors. Next few sites are very important. First is goal of ideal fistula treatment. Complete eradication of the sepsis, facilitate timely durable healing, preserve the spinter integrity and function, ensure the continence preservation. That should be done in any fistula. When we are planning to treat the fistula, we have to strike the right balance between the recurrence and incontinence perfectly in case of fistula and anno. But if it is complex fistula and anno, slightly paradigm shift towards the continence if recurrence comes someone else or you can manage in second attempt. Second thing is abscess and fistula, acute face abscess, chronic face fistula, we differentiate. I, but we have to club together and tell it as an anogenital sepsis so that we can give justice for every fistula. Dr. Arun Rajna Sukal, uh, sir, give a uh, three sentence, very powerful sentence for the fistula. That is anal anatomy and fistula patterns are constant. Surgeon has to learn it. Anorectal sepsis spread in predictable pattern. There is no rocket science. We have to think about it. It always uh, spread along the path of anatomical plane between the muscle and spaces. Never crosses the muscles until and unless it has been operated by the surgeon, done by the surgeon or it is a non-cryptoglandular. Anogenital sepsis spread along the path of least resistance. It starts at the dentate, crosses the internal spinter, trap in between the two spinter. If it is medial to the internal spinter, it never crosses the fistula. It gets ruptured and come as a small fissure. When it goes in trap, then it will lead to a spasm of internal spinter. It can travel down low interspintric, high interspintric. It can travel between the subcutaneous bundles or subcutaneous and superficial muscle bundle. It will become low transpintric. That is none of surgeon interest. It can be managed simple cutting procedure. Only when we passes between the, uh, the deep and uh, superficial muscles of the external spinter, that's what the concern for surgeon where incontinence lies. So based on this natural pathway, it's been in five pa patterns. That is a low interspintric. When it crosses the external spinter, lower power, but low transpintric anteriorly high transpentric goes to deep perineum for that anterior high posteriorly uh, high transpentric goes through the post anal deep post anal space so because of that we call as a anterior posterior high transpentric fistula when it goes in between the spinter and goes upward direction till the supralevator or interspentric that can be high interspentric it can reach even up to the retroperitoneum only these five patterns we can get in 97-98% of the patients uh, sometime it can come with a combined key component of any fistula are internal opening where the history or all the uh, problem has started 
interspintric space is the battlefield where everything has been cooked up the transpintric portion that is a concern of the surgeon where if it is a high transpintric i don't want my patient to land in incontinence the distal portion it may travel in multiple spaces everything surgeon has to understand properly so that they can deal the disease properly need to give a better outcome the classification put simplified classification uh, by standards practice task force guidelines is the fistula and ano can be a simple when there is a uh, we can apply spinter cutting procedure without any incontinence is fistula and ano can be complex high incontinence risk if we put the spinter cutting procedure we classify surgery for fistula into spinter cutting best suited for lower simple fistula avoid in high complex spinter preserving i aim to preserve the spinter integrity while uh, treating the complex fistula but it carries a risk of recurrence spinter function preserving radical excision with functional reconstruction for continuous preservation to be done for complex fistulas surgical approach for any fistula our first step is to excise the central disease the proximal intrinsic fistulectomy to be done for every patient irrespective of what is a type and what is a pattern of the fistula so 70% will be tackled at the start we may call the patient in prone we use the lift anoscope to dissect the intrinsic space we strap the buttocks so that intrinsic space will be prominent the intrinsic dissection we go in intrinsic space we do the proximal intrinsic fistulectomy that is nothing but excision of the fistula strap along with internal opening intraspinter plane ensuring 5 mm of margin that is nothing but modified park has been described this takes care of the 70 to 75% of the uh, patient uh, uh, recovery no recurrence or success done by this so we want we uh, propose everyone should do this first at the start of the procedure so that you have taken care and we advocate to buzzing interspintric space because the gravid where it has been cooked some glandular component may spread up once central disease excision is done then think about how we want to approach the fistula thinking about the fistula approach type 1 type 2 what has been classified type 1 is low intraspintric already procedure has been completed type 5 is high intraspintric somewhat extend and open up the intraspintric space so nothing more to be done and these are almost 30 to 35% of the fistula cases you need not to do you have done already a procedure if it comes to type 3 type 2 and type 4 then we need to think about spin you know, all the rubbish whatever has been described in the literature about the type of fistula fistula surgery different methodology type 2 type 3 type 4 right these are the transpintric pattern type 2 is nothing but a low transpintric we can classify as a simple and complex in that almost 40% of the patient are simple these are low transpintric without complexity they are straight away go for spinter cutting procedure only those patient with low transpintric associated with crohn's will go for the second the low transpintric anterior female where risk of incontinence is there i in type 3 anterior high type 4 posterior high transpintric these are the only 20 to 25% of the patient where we need the something different these are the complex fistula where we need a either spinter function preserving or spinter preserving procedure to be done the spinter preserving procedure these are many procedure has been described in the literature spinter function preserving procedure is nothing but the fistulectomy and primary spinter repair we can think of a spinter preserving procedure and spinter function preserving and these are only 20 25% portion of the fistula treatment where we need to think so much and 70 to 80% there is no need to think do the standard procedure you will be out of the trouble and patient will have best possible outcome unnecessarily don't apply spinter preserving procedure for simple and intrinsic fistulas a spinter cutting procedure these are indicated in a simple low intraspintric or low transpintric success rate is excellent 90 to 5 to 98% incontinence is almost nil if has been done selectively for less than 30% spinter is divided should not be applied complex or high recurrent fistula until and unless you know that how you to reconstruct or you are confident expert in that 
In simple fistulotomy, we do first interspental dissection, proximal interspental fistulectomy, that is central disease excision, followed by just lay open the tract across the splinter and across the tract. So this will allow us to have a wound, but wound will heal not more than take time, not more than three to four weeks. And that is the best opportunity for the patient. And these are almost 35 to 40 percent of the patients are low fistula going through superficial or subcutaneous bundle of the external splinter. Interspintric, low transpintric, there is no thing to think. Go for fistulotomy. Just divide the splinter and get rid of the disease. Give the best opportunity, even associated with abscess also. Splinter function preserving, splinter preserving procedure, where splinter is intact, not divided, but treatment has been done. This can be divided into anatomy based or tissue based like advancement flap, tropis, lips, slop, peltec and these are the low cost but this procedure can come with recurrence but continence will be preserved. That is the best part of the splinter preserving procedure. And if we have this kind whatever other has been described those are tech day one or modern procedure like warp, filag, stem cell, fistula plug, fistula glue. Frankly speaking, these all comes with reducing the wound, reducing the pain and all the other thing. But in fact, the available literature is heterogeneous. All come with expenses, added expenses, not improving the recurrence. In fact, recurrence has been a increase if not done properly because there is no proper taking care of the central disease part no proper taking care of the distal disease to reduce the wound in that scenario we may add more recurrence in um, tech driven or modern treatment so if at all you want splinter preserving procedure is there is no need to go for any tech driven procedure simple anatomy or tissue based procedure are the best either of five you can choose one procedure master in it you will get the best outcome your intention is not not to reduce the wound your our intention as a surgeon is not to reduce the pain the pain or wound is only a few days job but our intention is to preserve the continence our intention is to give best possible outcome for the patient for that purpose any one of the fist tissue based procedure is more than enough if you master it you can give best possible outcome for your patient you need not to think about it and in modern tech driven procedure if you want to do it, there is nothing harm. Our aim should be preserve the continence. Our aim should give the best possible success rate. At the same time, our aim is to not compromise the surgical core thought process. So we are having a large ischerical abscess. I just want to do the waft. I just want to do the laser. And I am not willing to make large wound. That's not correct. What we prefer the splinter preserving procedure is Piltec. Piltec is proximal interspintric fistulectomy with ligation of the tract and excision of the distal tract. The first step is identification of internal opening. We take an incision at interspintric groove, proximal interspintric fistulectomy, fistulectomy, ligate the tract over the external splinter and curate or excise distal tract. <laughs> What is main difference between lift and Piltec? Lift is both side we ligate and in Piltec is we uh, excise the central disease at first and then ligate over the external splinter. That is only the difference between the lift and Piltec. In Piltec what we do is we just go in interspintric space and uh, we do proximal interspintric fistulectomy followed by a ligation of the track or the external center followed by distal track curatage or excision that's what we do uh, with preserving the external splinter that's incontinence is preserved give the maximum possible in fact it also comes with recurrence because it's a splinter preserving procedure all splinter preserving procedure has a risk of recurrence splinter function preserving procedure fistulotomy fistulectomy primary splinter repair indicated for recurrent fistula even in pre-existing splinter damage incontinence success rate 90 to 96 percent continence more than 90 percent best suited for complex recurrent where both surgeon and patient are frustrated with multiple attempt acceptable patient is acceptable actually post-operative morbidity done under fistula expert surgeon and to be done when initial one or two attempt of splinter preserving procedure has been failed and splinters are fibros what we do is a routine fistulotomy fistulectomy followed by splinter repair we purposefully repair deep bind 
superficial bundle, leave the subcutaneous bundle and we choose sphincter preserving procedure only those patients where prior attempts of sphincter preserving procedure has been failed. The muscles are fibrous where suture can hold. The fleshy muscle first attempt no ends in abscess if you do sphincter preserving procedure chances of suture give is high likely. To conclude, if feasible, all surgeons should do MRI and read by yourself, interpret yourself. That's only the going to improve our fistula outcome. The mm, surgeon should make sure that MRI is done in every case. In fact, we propose do MRI even in the post-op to understand better. Start calling as anogenital sepsis, not merely fistula and abscess. Your mind will think what to do for the central disease at the start, which is the best option for any abscess even to give a better outcome, avoid the recurrence, we should go and every fistula and abscess has internal opening, only surgeon has to learn how to identify it. Always document and pattern and map the fistula before the surgery so that your methodology, your thought will improve and your success will improve. It's not going to be one day you will do the fistula and your result will be good. It's not like that. You have to improvise yourself by doing routinely this pattern, you will get habituated. Tailor your procedure based on the complexity and your expertise. Adopt the prone position and excise the central disease at the start. 70 to 80% of your problem is gone at the start only. Uh, in fistula, the surgeon should do the excision of central disease at the first. That's what we advocate everyone. Rest, type and other thing you think afterward. But first is your job is excise central disease. First surgeon is the best surgeon, do your best, but always prioritize safety. Even if recurrence come, you can handle in second attempt or someone else can handle, but don't compromise safety. Thank you for watching this video and you go through our other videos too. And we usually try to give more and more fistula video to make everyone understand better and you interpret better. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Subscribe our channel.